So those of you who have ever used addressable RGB components in your computer know what a nightmare it is to deal with the cable management mess that winds up manifesting behind your motherboard tray, usually in the form of a literal rat's nest. Antec may actually have a solution for some of that problem though. Meet the Prism Cooling Matrix. 220 millimeter fans in a single housing with a single cable to power both the fans and all of the addressable RGB lighting on the outside. Today we're going to take a closer look at this fan frame, see what's going on with the design elements, and then we're going to take a look at some performance testing numbers on a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooling radiator to see how these actually perform. So without further ado, let's take a closer look. Prior to doing all of this, I'd already done all of my testing and unboxing with this, so I'm not going to waste your time with that. I'm only going to touch on very specific things with this uh, prism cooling matrix up close right now. First things first, this is the exact same uh, RGB control kit that came with the original prism kit, and for more information on that, I'll go ahead and uh, link my original video up here on the first gen prism fans because this is uh, essentially the same thing now once again antec has failed to provide instructions with this uh, cooling matrix on how to sync the lighting with your motherboard ecosystem antec i really really hope you're listening um getting a little tired of of bringing this up and having to rely on on me telling the viewers and potential consumers how to sync the lighting here please include some directions. It doesn't take much. A single slip of paper with this lighting kit on, with this uh, LED hub on it and fan hub, with someone holding their finger over the mode button, with text underneath it that says, to sync with motherboard lighting, hold mode for five seconds. That would literally cost you all of like two or three cents. Like I can't imagine that's an expense that needed to be cut with this. Anyway, end rant. Now you will notice that with this cooling matrix, there's no attached cable. Uh, it is a modular unit. It's a single eight pin cable with its own proprietary connector that terminates into your pulse width modulated ca uh, cable connector for uh, controlling fan speeds and your addressable RGB header for controlling the, mother the, the lighting through a motherboard header or some other device. So if you didn't want to run the supplied lighting controller and fan controller with this, you can still plug this directly into your motherboard and it will still work just fine. Now, as far as the fan blades themselves, these have 11 blades per fan. They are each 120 millimeters in size. And the mounting for this only has four openings at each corner of the frame. These also utilize a really smooth feeling uh, hydraulic bearing and the RGB lighting on either side of the frame has this really nice diffusion bar. It's a really unique looking design. And it, the metal plate that covers it is this sort of space gray finish like you can see here. And you of course have the Antec logo directly on either side. But you can see when I flip it around, they face the same way, which is really nice. Um, they, they basically tell you that one of the logos is upside down. And basically what that allows you to do is orient this whatever way you want to within your case or on a radiator or whatever, and the logo is gonna be facing the right way. It's a subtle touch, but it's the little things that really matter here. And I actually really like that touch. Now, I can't find the exact numbers for this. If I can figure it out before the video goes live, I'll put it somewhere on the screen. But I believe there's something to the tune of 12 to 14 LEDs per side on this fan frame. The lighting is fairly vibrant and extremely accurate, at least in terms of using this with the RGB fusion ecosystem that my motherboard utilizes. Now, one other thing to touch on with this is there is, uh, uh, there is vibration damping pads on either side of the fan frame. You can see on the exhaust side that we have six pads in total, two in the middle and then two at each corner. But on the intake side, there's only these four uh, slim nubbins that are here on the end. I'm not really sure why they opted to go with less padding on the intake side, probably for aesthetics, I would imagine, because admittedly that does look a hell of a lot cleaner. But frankly, from a, from a practical perspective, I would have preferred having these thicker pads on both sides 
uh, rather than just these thin ones on the other, because depending on the case environment that you mount this in, that may or may not create uh, some vibration issues, especially if there's a brace across like the intake of, uh, of a chassis and this section is resting against it. That's, it could cause a little bit of vibration. Again, your individual mileage will vary right there. My experience with this, mounting it on a radiator, I didn't have any problems either way, but it is something to bear in mind. And just to be clear, the H100i that I mounted this on is a 240 millimeter radiator, so you can mount this to any 240 millimeter radiator, be it an all-in-one or an open-loop setup. Anyway, that's enough of me yapping. Let's get to some performance numbers. All right, so now that we've taken a closer look at the prism cooling matrix here, I'm gonna throw some of the specs up here so you guys get a little bit more context for some of the performance figures that we're gonna be looking at here. Now, I apologize for this not being a more expansive test config configuration. I'm, I've been really pressed for time because of some personal stuff that's been going on, and I actually talk about it in my vlog, which I should have linked up here for you guys to take a look at. Suffice to say, things are going to be very exciting around here for the channel soon, so definitely keep your eyes out for that. But, at the very least, I wanted to take a look at how this cooling matrix stacks up performance-wise to their original PRISM fans to see if maybe as a total ecosystem these make any kind of sense at all. Now my full testing configuration is listed down in the video's description, but the generics of it is I have a Ryzen 5 2600 clocked at 4.1 GHz all-core with 1.393 volts V-core. And cooling it was, of course, the aforementioned Corsair H100i V. V1 all-in-one, which I am still shocked is even working at all. Mounting this housing to that radiator was an exceptionally straightforward process because we only have the four mounting points at each corner of the fan frame, and because I was mounting it in a push configuration, the padding that's on the, the, that's on the exhaust side of the fan frame actually made for a relatively good seal. There's a couple of things to note, however. The fan frame itself is actually a touch wider than the radiator that I was mounting this to, by about two to three millimeters per side. So definitely keep clearance in mind when you're considering this for an all-in-one liquid cooler or for even an open loop configuration. The second thing to note, and this one is maybe a little bit more subtle, and I do want to explore this further in a later content piece, but I noticed that because the fan blades themselves are significantly larger than the original prism fans, the frame didn't seal 100% around the radiator, and there was actually a very small amount of the, the cutout for the fan itself that I could see between where the fan and the radiator connected. But otherwise, it cleans up really nicely, and as it turns out, it performs really well. Between the cooling matrix and the original prism fans, the temperature delta between the two of these was essentially identical. Where the performance differences manifest, however, is not within the performance deltas between the two, but with the operating RPM. The original Prism fans, because they utilize a smaller fan blade design with fewer blades on the fans, they have to spin at their full 2000 RPMs to maintain the temperature delta over ambient that I observed in my testing. Whereas with the cooling matrix, they only had to operate at 1450 RPM. Now I say only as if that's a low number. It's not really a truly low number, but what I'm trying to get at here is there's still more RPM range left in the cooling matrix, which means there is potentially more cooling potential to be had here. So that's actually a really strong showing for these fans. And I would suspect that if the fan frame design was capable of sealing more completely around the surface that it was mating to, you might even get a degree or two better performance because you have less air leaking around the fan frame. And again, I will be visiting that concept again in a later content piece when time allows for it. Now, the other cool thing that I discovered about this is that because the uh, RG RGB and fan control hub are identical between the two, uh, the two versions of the prism cooling kits, you can interchange the fans. And in fact, a single hub can mount four first gen prism fans plus a prism cooling matrix and have all the lighting configurations synchronized in such a way that actually looks, it looks pretty good and it looks pretty cohesive as well. 
The only thing I will point out is that white LED lighting between the two generations is a bit different with the cooling matrix having more of a blue shift to the white lighting and the Gen 1 fans having a slight red shift. It's not super noticeable unless you have some really severe OCD or something like that, but it is just something that I want to point out if you're looking to use these to make an all white lighting configuration. Now let's talk about price here. The original MSRP when this cooling matrix launched was $69.95. Personally, I feel like that's a bit too steep of an asking price for a product like this, even considering the clean lighting implementation and the performance of these fans. But the current asking price on Amazon of $49.95, and this isn't even including Prime Day sales, which may have changed this or not, but that that's actually a really compelling asking price, especially considering the build quality of the fan frame, the quality of the lighting that's produced here, the performance of the fans, and at least anecdotally speaking, the noise levels that this fan produces. These are exceptionally quiet fans, all things considered. And while I didn't get the chance to do any proper sound testing here, I can at least tell you that they're no louder than the first gen Prism fans, which are even using a physically smaller fan blade design with fewer blades in general. So I definitely have to give kudos to Antec for the overall design on this. I mean, I, I guess there's something to the IF design award that they got for the cooling matrix. So I guess that leads me into the conclusion here. At the original $70 MSRP, kind of a tough sell admittedly. I mean, $35 for an individual fan, we're talking Corsair fan pricing now, and they're using magnetic levitation bearings, all of the LEDs inside of the hub and on the fan frame, as well as a really, really well fleshed out, but proprietary RGB lighting ecosystem. However, at the current price on Amazon of $50 for this fan frame, and I will go ahead and have that linked down in the video description if you want to go ahead and buy one of these for yourself. That's actually a pretty compelling selling price. Much more reasonable per fan, plus you have the convenience of only needing to use half the fasteners to connect it to either a radiator or your case. Anecdotally, they're pretty well quiet, at least no louder than the original Prism fans. They sync up with all of the major motherboard RGB lighting ecosystems, and they happen to perform exceptionally well on a 240mm all-in-one radiator, so... Yeah, I mean, I, I can't really think of a reason at the $50 asking price to not recommend the Antec Prism cooling matrix here. But sound off down in the comments below. Have you purchased one of the cooling matrixes before or have you been looking at this and weren't really sure about it before? Do you have any additional questions you'd like to ask either myself or Antec about it? I'm sure they'll be looking down at the comments below for any feedback or questions or suggestions you guys might have. Also do want to reinforce, I will be doing some follow-up testing with this and many of the other fans and cooling solutions that I have on hand in future content pieces. So stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button and that little bell button down there if you want to make sure you get more of that in your sub box. Also, toss the video a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. And remember to follow me on all my social media feeds. I'm on Twitter and Instagram, at The Manic Geek. And I'll catch you guys next time. Take it easy.